Harbaugh is a very <laughs> unique individual. And just because the general manager likes him, he's got to sit down with the owners and the general manager and the president of the team and give his vision. And you know how it is when you're in an interview, maybe he picked his nose at the wrong time. Who knows? I mean, it's just <laughs> he obviously couldn't wild him enough for them to say, you know what? You check the boxes. We're, we're done. Because they already interviewed the minority candidates. That was already done. They they took care of that a long time ago. So I believe this was a legitimate interview. They just, at the end of the day, said, that's not our guy. There's no never a wrong time to pick your nose, is there, Jay? <laughs> well, reportedly, he was there for nine hours. So I don't know how you don't pick your nose if you're there for nine hours. Um, oh, yeah. Good point. You know, look, it, it's, it's interesting to me, though, what future interest will Jim continue to receive from NFL teams and how that ultimately can affect his relationship with Michigan, right? Um, it's that Michigan fans and their staff and faculty were elated that Jim would come back because obviously, you know, look, who are you going to replace at that juncture if Jim were to take this job this late in the game, right, with that top 10 recruiting class? But you wonder as, as more job opportunities come up and his name keeps being resurfaced, how will that affect his relationship with Michigan if he keeps the door slightly open? Hey, Key, here's an, here, let me follow up with you, okay? Because I hear what you're mm-hmm. saying. If they, already did all, if they already dotted all their I's and crossed all their T's in terms of the like Rooney Rule type stuff that could get them in hot water and everything, do you think Jim Harbaugh knew it was a real interview? Or do you think it's possible he went in being like, oh, come on, man? I think he went in, I'm Jim. Yeah. Why am I getting on the plane and coming in? Let's get the deal done. I think he went in, like Courtney said, with it like, I'm, I'm ready to go. And so at the end of the day, that's why he wasn't there, uh, was it yesterday? Yeah, yeah yesterday, yesterday on National Signing Day. National Signing Day because yeah. he already imagined, oh, I'm going to be living over here. I'm going to be going to work in the snow over here. He already had envisioned all that. And he probably was thrown with a curveball when he walked away without an offer. Yeah, I, I agree with Key on that assessment. I'm Jim. But I, I will say this, Max, to your point. I mean, the amount of pressure that the NFL is under right now is just incredible. I mean, it's a daily topic around Brian Flores, Hugh Jackson. And now you're telling me that African-American coaches would go 0 for 9 in the opportunities that have been available this year? That that. that that makes things uncomfortable. Like, I'm not saying that influences the Minnesota Vikings. I'm just saying overall, the entire narrative makes people and teams uncomfortable. To What's everybody. left? Houston, New Orleans. Houston's not a good job right now either. No, but I'm just saying jobs. Or- Houston, New Orleans. Who am I missing? Am I missing anybody? Uh, I don't think, think that's. Um, Houston, New Orleans. Might- help me. Am I missing somebody? Might be, I feel like there might be one more, but I can't think of who it is. Houston, New Orleans, Minnesota, those three. Miami. Oh, Miami. Oh, so Houston, Miami. New Orleans, Miami. Miami. So maybe those are the last four? It's a lot yeah, of jobs, left, yeah. guys. It's a lot of jobs. Oh, Jacksonville. Five. Jacksonville. Um, See, this hmm. is one of the when, – when, like, when I talk about, like – pernicious stereotypes, right? They're, 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 it's bad stuff that's kind of in the ether, out in the air, but people aren't really conscious of it, right? And it has this negative effect. The, you know, Keel, you'll always talk about like, oh, he stood next to Sean McVay, he got a job, right? He did, right, Kevin right. O'Connell. Yeah, right, like whoever, <laughs> whoever. It's like but, pixie dust. <laughs> right, no doubt. <laughs> oh, Sean McVay, pixie dust, right. But now, right, it used to be the original stereotype was black Men can't lead. That was what kept them out of quarterbacking and head coaching, right? That was the stereotype. Then that got dispelled, of course. And then it's I, now. I don't get it, man. Now, now, right. now here's what I think it is. It's this idea that you need to be the hot shot offensive coordinator. Now, think about this. Like Eric Bieniemy. Right, but I'm going to get <laughs> no, to that in a second. But think about this. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> that, means there, that means you have to have the brains. You have to be strategic and have the brains. And now the stereotype, which is unsaid, which I think is affecting hiring, is if it's a black offensive coordinator and they're having success, it must be the coach calling the plays. We don't really believe No, it's the it's quarterback. Or it's, it's the, the quarterback, quarterback. Or it's the coach. But it's not that dude. And, it's and it seems to me 
that that's some of what seems to be going on. Like, the point is you got to come up with explanations for what's happening. It's crazy, Max. I, I, I you know, I joke about standing next to Sean McVay and, and just touching him, rubbing his back, and you get hired. I joke about that. Now, here's what I would say. Kevin O'Connell ain't called a damn play. And look, whatever. They hire him, that's fine. But Raheem Morris is a brother who's sitting there dialing up the defense. The defense is keeping you in games when Matthew Stafford is screwing it up. You are in the Super Bowl partly because Sean McVay and Matthew Stafford, but partly because of Raheem Morris in the defense. But this brother can't get a job yet. It's just crazy to me, man. I don't get it. You know, and he was a head coach before, so you have the experience. He actually calls defensive plays. So you check in that box. I just don't get it. I don't get it. You know, we had um, we had uh, Chris Mortensen on the show, and he mentioned yesterday, he was like, look, he was, he, he was very forthright about doing self-examination about things as he got older and more experienced and came into contact with more people. I was very impressed with what he had to say. At one point he said, um, I'm not one of these people who think because the league is 70%, whatever, black, that you need to have that exact number as a percentage of you know, head coaches, let's say. And I think he's right. Let's say it was yeah. 50%. Mm -hmm. But let's say it was 90%. Because let me tell you something. Right now, it's at like 3%. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and 90% is a lot closer to 70% than 3%. In other words, really, yeah, sure, there might only be 50% black head coaches. That would make sense. But 90% would make as much sense as 50. And there's 3%. There's one black head coach. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.